Hi, we're the fourth grade teachers from Longsville Elementary School. I'm Emily Pinkham and I teach reading and writing. Heather Kaufman, I teach science and social studies. Julie Schultz, I teach math. And we're gonna be talking to you today about communicating with students and families during distance learning. First, we'd like to tell you a little bit about our instructional model at Mogensville. We have five classrooms of fourth graders. We have two teachers that switch and the three of us that switch. So we needed a way for us to very easily get to all of our students. So we had a lot of reasons for um, using something that we call the At a Glance Weekly Schedule. And this was a document that we created in Google Classroom that allowed us to communicate with students and families in one location. And we decided to use this tool because it streamlined communication. So families had one document where they were going to see what they need to do for the week. And it also provided them with a daily schedule so they knew exactly what they need to do and when it was due. It also allowed us to strategically plan our Zooms. That way, um, ELA and science and social studies teachers weren't Zooming at the same time that math teachers were Zooming. And it also allowed us to talk and plan with our fellow teachers and teachers that we collaborate with, like the special ed teachers and the EL teachers at Mogensville. If you go to this link, and it will be, also be shared with you in our resources tab, you will be able to go to a template version of our At A Glance weekly schedule. And we would make copies of this from week to week. So as you can see at the top, we would include uh, the date or the date range. And we gave some extra information um, just about logistics, how things um, were to be turned in and where they could be found. So one of the best, I feel like, um, characteristics of this chart or this template was that everything the student needed to do or would be graded we would be marked or highlighted in blue and everything that was optional would be in green. At the bottom, we also included additional things that students could work on in case they finished what they needed to. And again, this will be available to you uh, to manipulate and change as you need. And Heather's gonna tell you a little bit about the main communication tools or where we would share this at a glance weekly schedule. Yeah, so it's really important, especially having the three round that we do that we didn't wanna overwhelm parents, but we wanted to make sure that we were giving them enough information to keep them aware of what was expected throughout the week. And not only did we want to communicate with parents, but we also wanted to communicate with students as well. So our main communication platforms that we use would be the Google Classroom Stream. And we made sure that when we were using the stream, we utilize that for announcements specific to students. And we may put our Zoom links in there, but we kept classwork out of the stream tab to keep communication clear and open for students and parents as well that are utilizing the classroom with their child. So we kept stream for announcements and we kept the classwork tab where all the classwork was housed to keep that nice, neat and organized. So here you can see an example from my science and social studies classroom where it's neat and tidy and there's that weekly at a glance calendar. That way students were responsible for the information as well as the parents. And then in classwork, we kept that communicated by the week. So we may have put um, the task name, the week that we were working within, and we kept everything within those topics. So we tried to keep everything very organized so that communication was very clear for students to know to go to the Streamwork tab for announcements and the Classwork tab for the classwork. And then we also used uh, Class Dojo to communicate with parents. And that is a simple way to get this, the same information to parents that includes the weekly at a glance calendar and any other important reminders or information that parents would need to know. We also utilized the Synergy email system because even though I had pretty good amount of parents within the Dojo app, we didn't have all of them. So it was really helpful to keep communication open via Synergy email. And it's also very quick because you can get the information out to all the parents that have signed up within Synergy. And I would get responses from the Synergy emails that I didn't always get from Class Dojo. 
So it was very important to not just use one way to communicate with parents, but to use multiple ways to communicate with parents to make sure they're getting that information. So to communicate with students, we primarily use the Google Classroom platform, utilizing that stream in particular. And then with parents, we use Class Dojo and we use the Synergy emails as well. And typically those messages would be the same um, no matter what the platform, but of course tailored to whether or not a student was reading it or whether a parent was reading it. As we work through um, distance learning, we realized that um, we had some glitches when trying to check for students who um, failed to turn things in or who would turn things in late. So Heather um, found a, or designed a, a Google form that we used. And we also found this really helpful, especially as we came to the end of distance learning and students had several things that they needed to share with us or turn in. Yeah, and the nice thing about using this Google form is it was a way to communicate, but it was also a way to organize to help the teachers because as we continued throughout distance learning, we realized that with 70 plus kids, it was getting nearly impossible to go between the three classrooms every week daily checking to see that students were turning stuff in because at the elementary level they weren't always good about turning in assignments so even though they may have completed them we wouldn't have known that because they didn't turn them in and this also developed some responsibility with students to know that when they completed something that was due prior um, weeks prior that they had to go on and they had to complete this as a way to communicate with us as well Parents were um, made aware of this form and knew that it was the student's responsibility to fill it out and turn it in as they finished uh, missing assignments. So it also helped build some responsibility in that way while keeping the parents in the loop. And I know for us and the 70 plus kids that we work with and their families, communication was really important. And I even had some kids who had completed the the work throughout distance learning as we were doing it but i think they utilized it as a checklist to double check themselves which was great too because it really showed that responsibility piece um developing within them to go back and say yes i did this assignment i did this assignment and then i would just respond with a little note thank you for making sure you had everything turned in so it, it is another communication tool between teachers and students right and just like with the at a glance template, um, we have shared this with you as well. And if you noticed, it's obviously still filled in for um, our social studies and science tasks for fourth grade, but it would be very easy for you to edit it and change it so that you can put your assignments in no matter what your grade level or your content area. We are more than happy to share um, any other resources with you. If you have questions, we're willing to answer questions. Um, but we really found that working together as a team was very helpful for communication with families at this time. Um, regardless of distance learning or not, I think we'll still use some of these in the following years to come. So ladies, do you feel like there's anything else you'd like to share about our communication? I think it was just a good use of minimal um, ways to communicate but getting that information out there very specifically as to not overwhelm families because we wanted to honor and respect that we know we have many families who have students going to different schools within the same household so it was really important for us to not overwhelm but also provide enough information that they they felt like they knew what was expected exactly yeah. As teachers too, normally we would sit down and plan together, orally, face to face, and we don't have that as much anymore. So it was a way for me to see what my two teammates were doing and also remind my kiddos when we Zoomed, oh, forget you, oh, this to Miss Pinkham or Miss Kaufman. So I really, I used that as just as well. Right. Yeah, that's a great point, how it was easier for us to communicate with each other through that way and keep us um, accountable too for what was going on within the other classrooms to make sure we could give those reminders to students as well. Yeah. And that we didn't overwhelm anyone with the Zoom 
because we all know how tiring Zoom can be and Zooming every day or Zooming twice a day can be a lot, especially on fourth graders or younger kids. So it helped keep everyone accountable, but also manageable. Right. All right, well, again, we are the fourth grade team or one of the fourth grade teams from Mongazil Elementary School. We have our names listed here. So if you had a question or um, a comment or you found something that also helped you with communication, we would love to hear about it. And thank you for taking the time to uh, join our session today.